What's going on everyone? Welcome to another player rating show here on Back of the Net. And yeah, we're coming from arguably the best performance and result of the season. And uh, I was fortunate enough to be one of the fans back in the stadium to see us trounce Huddersfield. Five goals to nil and it was, it felt like the complete performance. And uh, it was great to be back in there for it. The lads delivered on the pitch for us fans that, that were fortunate enough to, to be back in the stadium. In terms of how it was run and things like that. I know people, anyone that is potentially going on Tuesday night that didn't go to the game on Saturday and you're anxious about it. From my perspective, it was ran very smoothly. The club, you know, credit to the club. It was really easy. Walk straight in, you know, done all the all the checks and things like that. But it was uh, really straightforward and uh, everyone was, you know, distanced nicely and it was the stewards were on top of things and it was... It was fine. It was fine. No problems whatsoever. So that was that was great. And like I say, credit to the club for that, and to the players on the pitch because we just delivered the performance that all, all us fans wanted to see. I, I said a few times it almost felt like Huddersfield were like we were when we were in the Premiership, and we were like Man City, if you if you know what I mean. So the amount of times we'd play like good football, like Huddersfield did yesterday at times, you know, thinking oh we're holding our own here, and then suddenly just so much quality when us, the equivalent of Man City, had the ball and just punish them. That's how it felt. And some of the players we got, I mean, we just delivered a performance and a result that, that we know we're capable of. The players that we had on the pitch, it was it was just so good to see in the flesh as well. It was outstanding. I'm absolutely buzzing. So I uh, can't wait for Tuesday already. It was it was great. And yeah, we had to make a, a few little changes. Obviously, Diego was suspended. And Meps that we weren't aware of had a, had a knock. So Jack Simpson come in, really pleased for him to, to get his opportunity to start and, and done well and, and Billing stayed in the side and it was and Lerma come back in. So it was it was a nice team on paper. I was I was happy with it and uh, excited to see how we got on and how we played and from I mean I think the goal the first goal went in after eight minutes, but we just we had so much quality and at times it felt like a bit of an exhibition. The lads were just were that level above Huddersfield and it was it was really good to see in terms of the uh, getting into the ratings obviously got a starting goal and that's uh, Asmir Begovic and early on actually he had a, a few saves to make there was one that was a shot and he was diving to his right and it took a deflection he'd done well to get a good palm to it and I think I'm pretty sure that's yeah that's his third clean sheet on the bounce so he deserves credit for that and he didn't have an awful lot to do after the, after that second half he was pretty pretty quiet but he just done everything well. We just keep reiterating what we've already said about Asmir. He's just been brilliant. He has been like a new sign, and I feel like I said all the time. But that's how it feels, and it was great to have him. I was in the Steve Fletcher stand, so he was um, in that goal that I was behind in the first half. It was great to give him a good round of applause and chant his name and stuff after some good saves and, and show him that we're, you know, really happy with what I was doing and we're, we're pleased to see him back. Um, and as much as he didn't have much to do, it's his third clean sheet on the bounce. Brilliant. I'm just going to give give Asmir an eight. I think that's that's as fair as you can go, really. I thought he was um, faultless again. In terms of the defence, you know, uh, a few little changes in there. Um, we'll just start with that right-hand side, which is um, Adam Smith, kind of that right full-back slash wing-back role. And uh, probably don't get the credit he deserves a lot of time. I think the last few games, his engine, he just non-stop throughout um, energy, been really, really good. He hasn't been able to be rotated um, like quite a lot of the others because of Jack Stacey's injury. And he's just working so hard and he's getting so far at the pitch. At times you think he's a centre forward, he's so far up. But then he's getting back and doing his defensive duties. Really pleased with Smithy. A few times, especially in the second half, a lot of our moves and, and attacks that nearly led to goals were all from, from Smithy being involved. A few little overlaps. Him and Lerner are actually linking up quite well, kind of on that right-hand side. But uh, really happy with Smithy. He's really... Um, starting to come into his own now and, and deliver them performances that we know he can. And I've always loved Smithy anyway. He's very consistent. And um, yeah, another one, eight out of 10 for me, for Smudge. Great to see him back in there performing to the levels that we know he can. Obviously no maps, like we said, but um, the leader, as always, Steve Cook was in the heart of the defence and well, there's no defender in the league I'd swap for him. He's just a monster and he, he stops everything. And he's good on the ball. He had a run second half and um, he ended up right in front of me. I was kind of right at the front of the of the Steve Fletcher stand. And he went at this mazy run. It was almost like the fans going, go on, go on, keep going. 
and he just kept going, got a little nutmeg in there, and it just got skipped. He was almost laughing as he was running. It was it was brilliant, but um, nice little uh, caveat, little run from him. But um, he was top draw as always, Cookie. He just what I liked about him, what you notice, probably should have mentioned it with asthma as well. What you notice um, when you're in the in the in the crowd, but obviously there's not not that many fans there. Is how vocal some of the players are, and him and Asmir in particular, so vocal. And to Cookie, he was playing alongside Jack, who hadn't had as, as many opportunities to start games. And the way he was talking to him, and the way he was leading that defence and the whole team was was evident. And Asmir behind him as well, very vocal, and um, just telling you know, telling Jack to do the basics and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And he was he was great at that. And and for me, another clean sheet as well. But he was faultless, and I'm, I'm going to give Cookie a nine because I just thought he was he was outstanding again. We we win five 0 so the defenders are not going to get that kind of credit, which I understand. But he was he was superb, and kind of alongside him was, as I mentioned, Jack Simpson. Um, you know, he's kind of had a few little appearances near the end of games as a sub, and obviously played in the cups. I actually, felt he'd done okay in the cups. And Jack's a weird one because he's obviously come from the academy, which is great to see. But I saw him in the kind of uh, post match interview and. He's one of the older, like academy graduates now. Um, he's not a youngster anymore, and you can see he's just desperate to play football. And he knows that the players ahead of him are are very good players, and it's really hard for him to break in. And all he can do is, when called upon, is deliver a high level performance. And before he started off, he, he there was a few misplaced passes. You can see what he's trying to do. He's trying to play a really nice pass. It was maybe a little bit to in score and that's what I was saying about Cookie kind of saying that do the basics and we'll build from there but he grew into the game and I thought he was he was superb after that um, really really good looked classy at times was reading it really well and Simo I think it's probably because of the level of players ahead of him so when he comes in I think it's uh, key to remember that some of the games he's been thrown into in the past were like Man City and at Anfield against Liverpool it's like just one of them but um he was part of that that clean sheet, and I thought he grew into the game and got better as it went on. And I was really happy with him. And he's a likable lad, and as I say, he's, he's someone that's come through through the academy for us, which is great to see. And I'm sure he's he's a real benefit to players we'll get onto later that are coming through at the moment through the youth. And I'm always, especially in this league, um, is he does he get into my eleven if if everyone's fit? Probably not. But if he's called upon like he was yesterday, am I concerned? I'm not. I'm not at all. I think at, at this level in particular, uh, Jack's a very good defender and I think um, he'd get in a lot of teams in this league. So it'd be interesting to see where his future lies because if he he needs, needs to be playing regular games, I think. Um, but he's, he's going to be a key member of the squad, I think, especially with a few injuries. But really happy with Jack and I'm, I'm going to chuck an eight in for him. And I was pleased to, to see him get into the side and we keep a clean sheet and it was a successful start for him, really. Um, kind of on that left side, he's, he's played a few different roles in terms of centre-half, left-back, things like that for Lloyd Kelly. And he was someone that I don't know if, if it was, like I say, because of where I was sat. He was right in front of me in the first half. Um, where I was sat was right low in the Steve Fletcher stand. And I'm right in front of the kind of left-sided centre-back and left-back and things like that. And he he was they would seem to be going, every time Huddersfield were attacking, they were down that their right side. So they were against him a lot. He got caught a few times on the ball, actually. But he grew into, another one that grew into the game. And by the second half, he was mustered. He was... He was superb, and yeah, probably for me, you know, I don't, I don't know whether it was because he was right in front of me, so I'm seeing the few little misplaced passes and things like that a little bit more, maybe. But um, probably wasn't as good as the other de defenders, but um, still, Lloyd's Lloyd's class player, and I'm, I'm happy with him. Whether he's, whether he's playing left back, centre back, left centre back of a three, he always does a job. He's good on the ball, a few last ditch blocks actually, and, and good interceptions, and um, I love Lloyd and forget about the injuries he's had and how he's come into the team played a lot of football this season and he's just been been quite consistent and just gets about his job well so I'm um, happy with Lloyd but like I say probably not as good as the others for me so I'm just going to give but still a, a 7 out of 10 because Lloyd was still still very good I felt and done his job well in terms of the the midfield we kind of have three in there and Lewis just absolute Rolls Royce isn't he absolute Rolls Royce everything came through him he's just He's sensational at times. There's not a not another midfielder in the league I'd swap him for, in my opinion. Um, so good, 90 minutes out of him as well. Um, some of the passes, some of the way he just controls football matches is he's getting better with every game, and it's really, really good to see him. Seems to have played to the levels that we knew he could, and um, 
love Lewis and it was it was really really good to see because I felt that when he you know with his injuries and coming in that the side when we we're in the Premier League it was hard for him to get that consistency and and build up them level of performances uh, now he's in a role that I think suits him and suits the team perfectly and he's delivering top top performances um, every single game and he's pivotal to our promotion hopes in my opinion and Lewis was just was just top draw and um, he's probably born on a nine actually isn't he eight or nine Oh, that's, oh, that's a tough one, actually. No, I'm going to give him a nine. I'm going to give him a nine because I just think he, he done everything just superbly. And he's he's, just, he's a fantastic footballer. And I love him. Absolutely love him. Great to see. And the man I, I love more than anyone, actually, is uh, is Jeff. And I had my Columbia strip on for him. I'm hoping he noticed that. Because only when I got in there, I realised that Huddersfield were playing in yellow. So there was just one person in the crowd wearing yellow. And that was myself. Um, but, yeah. He was, it was great. I was really pleased to see him back in there starting and it's just all energy. He was everywhere. I thought, is he right back? I think he ended there and then thinking, is he right wing? He's centre midfield, he's defensive midfield, he's attacking midfield. He was everywhere. And um, I think it's got to notice a little bit that the first couple of goals, the first three goals, I think he was really involved. I know he got the assist for the second, but he was part of that kind of assist, assist. Uh, the first goal he was involved involved with and then Brooksy fed, fed Dom. Second goal, he was the one that won it back. Played a nice pass in the Dom, who finished. And the third goal, he dinked the ball into the box that Dom controlled, laid off to Brooksy. So um, then a lot of attacks in the second half, um, he was really pivotal to. And I just, it's very rare for Jeff to have a bad game, and that he's he's everywhere. And he's another one that one of the. I think if if I said I can't say Lewis Cook, then who's the next best centre midfielder in the league? It's got to be Jefferson Lerma, isn't it? We got both of them. Absolute joy. And they complement each other really well. And as I say, I can't, I can't say any more about Jeff. Absolutely brilliant, and um, great to see him back and and playing again. Expecting him and Lewis to to continue in there. And yeah, solid eight out of ten for me for for Jeff. Never, never in danger of a good performance with Jefferson Lerma, in my opinion. And against Soul Club, Phil Billin, who's someone that I've done a little preview with a. I'm a Huddersfield fan before the game and obviously it was mentioned and I said it's really weird because if you had spoke to me a few weeks ago we'd probably be saying I don't know if he's got a future here isn't really playing um, fans aren't really happy with him but now I'm speaking to you and he's had a few really good performances and got a goal with it as well so I kind of expect him to start and he did and I thought he was good again he, he was really good he had um, something to prove against, against Huddersfield of course I know um, fans aren't particularly fond of him the way he left and things like that Um but his technical quality is there. I thought he worked hard as well and he linked things really well. There was one turn he did that was really, really good. And he does lose class at times, a really good footballer. Um, just want to see that on a consistent basis, really. But, you know, JT's got him in for a game. He's played well and he's kept them in the side. So he's been rewarded for them performances and I hope you can see that. And and he was good. He, he linked things really well and I was really happy with, with Billy. And it's... A weird one if he keeps up these performances it is like another new signing because he's he's up in them levels of performances that, that we probably knew he had he just wasn't delivering them so yeah billy was class again so eight out of ten for phil billing you know at the end of the day it was a five nil performance and i thought everyone was good so it's going to be high ratings today that's for sure in terms of the kind of a, attacking three i guess and we had the the magician david brooks i mean oh best player in the league potentially and linking everything really well. When he gets the ball, he just walks past people, just glides past them. He's, and when you watch him live in the stands, you just think what a footballer he is and how lucky we, ha we are to have him at this level. Ridiculously good. Um, took his goal so well. Could have had another one, to be fair, probably should have. Got an assist in there. Linked things up so well. Him and Dom were, were brilliant together, particularly in that first half, and managed to take him off as well and, and get him a bit of rest. He started a lot of games consecutively now, which is really good to see for Brooks Hughes. Obviously, had his injury problems, but you can tell now, last few games in particular, teams are just tr uh, are knowing he's a danger man and trying to double up on him. It's hard for them to still stop him. Just magician, absolute magician, and so good to have kept hold of him. And he looks like he's enjoying his football as well, really does. And uh, He's going to be key for us. Oh, he was just a joy to watch. Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten for Brooksy, and very close to the man of the match. He's not getting it for me, but very, very close. And probably someone for me maybe gets overlooked when we have these really good attacking displays, and that's Junior Stanislas. 
he's such an intelligent footballer for me. People think, oh, did Junior do much today? But he links everything so well. He's so clever in his positioning. He also really helped back. He was almost left wing back at times uh, in the way he was helping Lloyd Kelly and they were trying to get through down that side. And done everything well, you know, really, really good. Um, and the goal, I've seen a few people say, if that's Lionel Messi, that's sh- being shown on loop all, all weekend and all into next week, you know. I think Lewis has got a good chance of getting goal of the month for the last one and this has got a great chance. <laughs> Probably could put all five of our goals in there, to be fair. What a goal. He got it just, just into, into their half. And he was going, I was thinking, go on then, release it, hit it, and he just kept going. Just drifting in and out, dropping the shoulder, and then he just finished it with ease. And he, he he makes it look, when he's on it like that, he makes everything look so so easy. And it's just about keeping Junior fit, in there. We've all seen that quality. It's just about keeping him fit, and it's really good to see him getting a run of games and, and playing so well. And I was, I was chuffed, chuffed with Junior and uh, being consistent at the moment. So um, great to see, and yeah, he's, you know, you're almost, we know how good Arnie is and um, how great, I was thinking yesterday, how Dan Juma would have tore them apart. But at the moment, we're not missing him. And that's probably, I know people are saying, where's Arnie? Because he was like a minor hamstring kind of issue. But I guess from JT's point of view, he's thinking, we're performing really well. Let's not rush you back, mate, because there's no point. Um, you know, let's just make sure you're really ready because, you know, the players are performing at the moment. So we're doing all right without you. So gives you time to, to build your fitness back. And, and Junior's a key reason for that. Another one, 8 out of 10 for me. Um, tempted to go with a 9 just because how good that goal was. But it was it was a sensational goal. And yeah, that's going to that's be hard to be top this season, in my opinion. Um, now it is my man of the match. Dom, Dom, D, Dom. <sighs> Honestly, complete, complete striker's performance. He does everything. He genuinely does everything. He can hold the ball up. His first touch at times yesterday was brilliant over the Brooksy goal. The way he brought that out of the sky was superb. He links things so well. He's strong. He's powerful. He can get in behind. He can come short. He takes people on. He's nutmegging people. And now he's scoring goals. He's scoring goals. I've said it. I feel a little bit smug, got to be honest with you. And um, But I just I felt at the start of the season, I thought, well, give him a bit of time when people were saying uh, that's going to be our problem. We haven't got someone who's going to get enough goals. I thought... Let's 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 see with Don because I feel I know when we we spoke to Jason actually he said he felt if he got a few he'd gone a bit of a run and he seems to be proving that right and got a brace yesterday and when the way he took his goals yesterday thinking is that really someone that's not a natural finisher who's not a natural number nine no I'm not having it I'm not having it anymore he's what more can he do it's literally the complete performance he's doing everything. Um, I think he's something like third top goal scorer in the league, something like that. But the assist, he's got way more than the others as well. I'm thinking he can set up goals, he can score goals. I mean, what can this man not do at the moment? I mean, genuinely, for me, probably the best striker in the league. The way, you know, the way he's not only getting goals, but getting assists as well. And I, he's, for me, he's, he's on a run to get easily to get 15, 20 goals. So I think a lot of people will be eating their words, but it's... it's it's really, really good to see. It's I'm just so happy for him as well, you know. And the amount of goals he could have had this season, where he was, I felt he was more unlucky. Um, people were saying he was kind of just didn't look that confident in front of goal. I, I felt he was getting unfortunate. And I think yesterday the way he took his goals showed that level of confidence. Really, really good to see. I think he could have had his actually if we kept him on, but I think JT was right in just thinking let's just wrap him up and cotton wool now. The game's won and chuff for him, absolutely chuff for him. And yeah, just for the complete performance and a brace, he's got to get man of the match for me. Another nine, uh, along with Lewis and Brooksy, but he's the one that, that gets the man of the match award for me, which I think, uh, seeing things like that, it looks like that's he's going to get that award anyway. Um, superb. In terms of the subs, I mean, we haven't, the Matt Youngs have come on, I haven't even got visuals for them all, because, I mean, amazing. I'm just going to do it as a collective, really. Uh, we've got to start with the youngsters, haven't we? The two that come on at the end, uh, Jay-Z, we've seen bits of him in the in the cup and things like that, and He's always delivered really well. Got his international uh, debut for Zimbabwe off the back of it. Really good to see him come on. He scored. He, um, he looked like he'd seen the headlights a little bit. That would have been, been great if he had put that in. But great to see him come on. And then uh, Johnny Birchall. What a story. What a story that is. Named on the substitutes bench. Uh, JT's obviously said to him, you know, you're doing really well in the academy. 16 years old. Born in 2004. Pfft makes me feel old but um 
and yeah, got him involved. Thought you know, I'll get you in the squad, get you involved in the first team. You deserved it. You've earned the right, and he probably thought you know that's amazing. And then you go, we're finding it up. I'm going to give you a go. I'm going to let you have a run out here in front of the fans as well. Oh, what a moment for the lad! And put a nice little ball through at one point that we nearly scored from. Nearly got an assist on his name, but what an opportunity for him and amazing to see the the academy and the youth players coming coming through and. You know, I saw him afterwards all going over the other players, hugging him and stuff like that. It was really nice to see really good team spirit and great to see them academy players coming through. And there were even players that we've seen a bit of, Gavin Kilkenny, Jane Nantney, uh, Namdi Offerboy, who were also on the substitutes bench yesterday. So really, really good to see. So chuff for them too. Then we had Roro, Roro come on. He was he was really close to scoring as well. And I felt we'd done it from right, actually. Dropped the shoulder, done really well, and then just hammered it. And the keeper actually made a good reaction save. But he showed that he's got a... Got a bit of class, so I think he will. He will be um, will play a part this season in the squad because um, he's definitely got ability. Roro, very raw talent, but um, I like him. I like him. It's a perfect game to bring him on. He can just show a bit of his flair and stuff like that. And and he, he done well when he come on as well. Then you got more of an experienced head in, in Goz. I mean, that's what I mean when you're looking at it and the opposition are, are tiring and we're just almost, you know, it was like an exhibition. We're taking the mick out of them almost and just passing them off the pitch. And then you bring on Dan Goslin. He's going to give so much energy and so much work rate, right? and when they're already shattered, you can see that. And he come on, bagged an assist, standard Goslin, brilliant. And then bagged an assist for Sam Surridge. You know what? A, just a complete day, one that you're Dom Solanke, like I say, he's performing so well. And then you've got Sam Surridge just like there, ready, coming on, goal scorer. I was chuffed for him because he's he scored a few goals now, but hasn't got one in front of fans yet. So that was really great and uh, really really pleased seeing just take the goal. First touch really, really nicely and another one that's come through the academy and and showing that, you know, we can bring these players through. And I saw a few people saying, you know, when you looked at the bench before the game, like, oh, look at that substitute bench, squads look a little bit thin, we're getting tested there. Well, hang on a minute, let's, let's forget that they're just all youth players and academy players. Let's see what the quality they've got. I think these players, are they might not be names yet, um, but... They've got a lot of quality and uh, a lot of them will probably get more minutes for other championship sides. So I certainly don't look at it and think the squad looks thin. I look at it and think these players are good players. Um, if we need a goal or whatever, I think bringing on, bringing on players like Sam Surridge, um, Jane Nantney, Rodrigo Raquel, me, that's not bad. And um, yeah, so that was that was really good to see him really chuff for, for Sarge to, to come on and bag a goal as well. And he's someone that's still knocking on the door because he, he played well in the last time he started. And I think it's just about how JT goes into games and, and tactically sets up and he's doing it so well at the moment and we'll get into him and I was just delighted for him, absolutely delighted for him. The first time he's been able to be in there with, with our supporters, puts that aside, 5-0, brilliant performance. He's got, given the opportunities to young players off the bench, clean sheet, amazing goals, liquid football, what more can you ask for? I was absolutely delighted for him. Absolutely delighted for him. And the boys seem to be enjoying their football. The decisions he's making have been brilliant. Even when, you know, we're seeing things and saying, oh, Sorry's played really, really well. I feel sorry for him not getting a start. But with the performances since that have been brilliant. So he's obviously looking at it game by game. And it wouldn't surprise me, for example, if, if Sorridge maybe come in the next game against Wickham, if he thinks, do we need three in there? I might leave Billing out for this one and, and bring in Sorridge, for example. Um, that would be interesting. Obviously, we've got Diego back as well. We don't know how close Meps and, and Arnie are to return. And so there'll be a bit of rotation, I'm sure. But got so many options. And, and JT's been backing up the decisions he's made. You know, he's had some really, like, good problems, if you like. And he's adapting in games and before games, making the right right decisions, in my opinion. And like I say, the lads have been enjoying their football. And I'm, I'm delighted for JT, really am. And uh, great to see him come round and see the... He's really supportive of, of us supporters and what we brought to the performance yesterday. And we could thank him as well. Really, really nice at the end of the game. Love that. And for me, we won 5-0. We kept a clean sheet. We played unbelievable football. He gave a 16-year-old his debut. The, the, like I say, the football was just beautiful to watch. We had the fans back in the stadium. First time, JT is getting a 10. 10 for JT. Chuff for him. Absolutely chuff for him. And like I say, it was just amazing. And... I'm fortunate enough to be to be going again on Tuesday, and I can't wait. Cannot wait. As I always say, you can't take anyone for granted, and, and Wickham are a team that, on paper, it looks like a, a real comprehensive one, doesn't it? I think they'll be, Bournemouth will be kind of the banker 
of the week in terms of that um, when you look at the league positions and and the form and stuff like that. But but Wickham are fighting for their lives and sometimes we saw against Sheffield Wednesday. Sometimes it's hard when you play teams that are down there. Rotherham was another one because they were set up differently and. Fortunately, I think JT will, will look at that and that's why I think it wouldn't surprise me if maybe um, Sludge comes in and they maybe might play a bit deeper um, and try and make themselves hard to break down. And because of that, it might be better to get someone close to Dom and it wouldn't surprise me if we see someone like, like I mentioned, maybe a bidding come out. He started a few games now and, and give Surridge a chance again from the off and, and we maybe look at it and potentially, like I say, Diego might come back in. So um, but it'll be interesting and see what you guys think. But as as we've seen already, JT will certainly look on the opposition and, and how he thinks we can, the best way of winning the football match. It's one of them. It might be a really tricky one that that we have to slog out and get the result at the end of the day. The result is the most important thing. Let's just get another three points on the board. But it could we could really give them a hiding as well, the way we're playing. At times yesterday, therefore, this could be another Birmingham 8-0 because we could have had more. We could have had more. And... Um, Joy to watch, I mean, you know, you think of how long it's been without being in the stadium, you go back in and see that, it was just perfection, perfection, and just great to see see some faces, you know, you haven't seen for a while, have a bit of banter with the stewards and things like that, it was just just great to be back in there, it really, really was, and as I say, anyone that, that's potentially going on Tuesday that, that weren't lucky enough to, to get in yesterday and uh, concerned or, or about apprehensive about how it works, from my point of view, the club had it run really well um, and it was spot on. So um, if you're coming, be a few more there as well. be great to see everyone. And I'm actually first time because I'm a season ticket holder in the Steve Fletcher stand and that's where I was yesterday. I'm actually in the Ted Mac, um, in the Ted Mac for this one. I've never been in the Ted Mac. I think the last time I was in the kind of South stand was when it was a bit more, it was open top, I think, against Huddersfield in that playoff game. Donald McDermott scored, Ingsy missed a penalty, we drew. That was the last time I was in the colour South, so that wasn't the Ted Mac then. Um so that'll be that'll be an interesting one for me at the back of the Ted Mac. So, so that'll be I'm gonna enjoy that actually. But um yeah like I say run really smoothly. Could have asked any more, could you? Could not have asked of any more. But um and it was just great wanted to see everyone on social media and things like that just buzzing and people at home saying it even felt different watching it with fans there and obviously the fans that went it was you know, I think people people forget we talk about how difficult a year it's been in general and football's so important and it was just so great to be back in there and just get that release for a few hours and loved it and I'm still absolutely buzzing off it. So great to see and the AFCB family all coming together. I saw um, Sam managed to get up a nice little vlog, the Match Day Experience, if you haven't watched it already, um, the last video on the channel and, you know, he was watching it from home. I was watching it in the ground and there was a few other fans, Paul Kenwood, Kirk Tovey, doing some nice little footage of, you know, kind of walking to the ground and kind of getting everyone the feel of it. So really good. And once again, massive thanks to to the boss, Sam Davis, who's um, keeping that, the family together. It's been been fantastic. So um, all smiles this end. And uh, sure, we'll be again midweek. Really, really looking forward to it again. So, um, yeah, let me know if you agree with Don Man of the Match and the ratings and things like that. And if you if you were there, what you thought about it. And if you're going on Tuesday, how excited you are, etc., etc. So, um, cheers for watching. Appreciate all the support and love, as always. And, um, yeah, buzzing. It's all smiles, isn't it? It's brilliant. It's really good to be an FC Bournemouth fan. So, uh, let's enjoy it. Let's keep smiling. Let's keep talking to each other and keep up the positive vibes. Up the cherries. Oh